is hot out here at Springhouse Gardens. All this rain we've been experiencing, Richard, over the summer has really taken a toll on some of the plants. Not because they don't like necessarily the water, but they're getting so much of it. They're getting mm -hmm. a lot of wind, and some of them it just look like they've taken a little bit of the beating. That's right. Um, and there's a lot of these late summer, early fall blooming perennials that tend to just be a little floppy anyway. And in, in the gardens of yesteryear, people would come out and that they would make a whole big event out of staking your dahlias or staking your hollyhocks or staking whatever needed to be staked so it wouldn't be falling over. Well, that all kind of went out of fashion in the 80s, 90s, and, and the, the early 2000s. But people are rediscovering a lot of these tall, old-fashioned plants, and especially people that garden with natives. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a type of native goldenrod. Um, and there's just some of these plants that just aren't used to trying to behave in a garden. <laughs> so you have asters, you have goldenrods, you have right. uh, joe pies a lot of times will flop. So one of the things that's really kind of interesting to do if you have time and if you want to get to know your plants is to go out, get you some bamboo stakes and also some of this green stretchy uh, tape. And this allows you to stake things up and neaten it up a little bit without it looking totally like you've put them all in a cage. Right. Now I'm going to ask you a question here because we've just been working on this one before right. the camera. Now, a lot of these were laying on the ground, and we see this has a really hard turn. Yeah. It's because it's trying to get to the sun, right? What's amazing, yeah, because they've been laying down like these ones mm -hmm. in the front. But what's going to happen is once these get used to kind of growing up, they're going to all stretch, stretch up and straighten themselves out. But one of the other techniques that we might want to do, if you're having a party or a wedding in the next few days, Happens or something to be a like big one that, going on right here. <laughs> that you don't want to wait for this, all you'd really have to do Just trim it. is prune that back. Okay. And I'm going to do that for some of these other ones. I don't want to necessarily have to cut, uh, tie every single thing up. But we're just going to come through here okay. and do a little bit of pruning. And what's going to happen, and, and see, I don't really want this to be sticking out there. But whenever you do any pruning, go back to where there's a leaf, and you could prune it back to any of these. And what's, what, what, what will end up happening is that you'll be forcing some new growth out, and it's going to delay the bloom on this particular branch or any of the branches that you do that to. Mm -hmm. So when these are all blooming in late July into August, you're going to have some that are going to be coming up in mid to late August. We like that. So you're going to be able to have a succession of blooms on the same plant. And you can really use that as a technique to really expand, extend the bloom of any of your summer blooming perennials. So don't be afraid to experiment. You can do that with summer flocks. You can do that with black-eyed Susans. Cut those back at different times, and you'll have blooms for a lot longer period. All right. Well, if people have questions for you, it's a great time still to come out here. Yeah. I mean, we're open all through the summer. Our hours are changing a little bit, so check our website or check our Facebook page. Um, but we're here pretty much seven days a week. Uh, we'd love to see you, even if it's hot and even if it's raining or even if it starts to getting dry. There's still lots to do in the garden, lots to see out here, too.